Hi guys, welcome to Roots. Roots Online. Roots Online, and uh, it's Thursday, April 9th. Yes. Just so you know, this is take 100. No, it's not. <laughs> Maybe like 30. <laughs> but. but anyway, uh, <laughs> we're going to be working from the book of John 6, verse 4 to 11. And we're focusing on the story of the boy who gave five loaves and, and two, two fish. fish. Um, I'm just going to read it out first. Now, the Passover, a feast of the Jews was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and there he sat with the disciples. Now, the Passover, a feast of the Jews was... I uh, just read the same thing. <laughs> Let me start that again. Now, the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread? that these may eat. But he, this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples. And the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. So basically he gave, he fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. Yeah. Which it's is pretty, pretty... Well, it is impossible. It is impossible. It's not pretty impossible. That, it's that, impossible. Is, that, is impos that is impossible to a mere mortal yeah. who does not have Jesus. Yeah, that's true. Because with Jesus, all things are possible. Oh, oh look at that, look at that. Um, uh. <laughs> so yeah, we're focusing on um, John's... Uh, account of this but yeah. this miracle is recorded in all four of the gospels and it is actually the only miracle that is recorded in all four is what it says in my bible yeah so it must have a pretty good significance within the yeah. story of the life of jesus so yeah um john gives the most detail out of all the accounts which is why you chose him so in the other accounts it doesn't mention that the loaves and the fish came from a boy um yeah. john is the only one to have said that so it's, I think that's an important part to pull out because the fact that he's yeah. labelled it that it was from a boy, there must yeah, be yeah. reason for it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I think the, the really uh, important thing about the boy is uh, when Andrew says, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves, two small fish, but what are, what are they among so many? He's basically like saying... There's, there's not enough here, I, we can't do anything with this. Yeah. And for uh, the small boy who's there, he probably just wanted to give his little innocently. Yeah. Um, but he would have felt like, oh, well, it's not going to help. Yeah. Um, but Cause... Jesus didn't react that way, did he? No. Um, yeah, because obviously we know Jesus' character, so when this boy is going up to him with his food, we know that Jesus, and we, we can obviously read the story, but at that time, yeah. um, the boy probably didn't know what to expect. So it says in my Bible, somewhere, where does it tell? Oh yeah, that the crowds followed not out of belief, but out of curiosity concerning the miracles that Jesus performed. So all the people were there didn't actually follow yeah. Jesus because they thought he was the Messiah. They just wanted to know yeah. what he was doing and probably wanted to see if it was fake. Yeah, if yeah, I'm honest, because yeah. it was all about that curiosity of who he was. So yeah. even this little boy probably didn't have the idea or the revelation of who Jesus is. So when he's going up to Jesus with the little thing that he has, he's probably feeling quite yeah. nervous. I think if it was me, I'd be feeling a bit like, yeah, yeah. what am I going to do with this? Yeah. What is he going to do with this? Yeah, is he going to yeah. make a fall out of me in front of all these people? Because yeah. can you imagine just like 
walking through a fight thousand people like with your little bit yeah and like yeah. thinking That's this cool. is not enough like yeah. what i have is not enough yeah. like this is not sufficient yeah, yeah. and getting to jesus like this is all i've got yeah, yeah but like jesus uses that and he like does a miracle with it and provides for everybody yeah yeah but just imagine like being that boy in that moment like yeah the things that you must be feeling yeah. but even his little is enough to yeah. do something amazing for yeah, yeah, yeah. so many people i think that's the that's the amazing thing is what you have no matter how little it is if you can offer it to god he can do something incredible with it yeah and we don't know per se if they didn't just nab, nab it off him you know, yeah. they, they, I don't know. We don't know. We it doesn't really say. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know if they just like snatched it off him and he was crying, like, I'll give you back my <laughs> bread or whatever. But I, <laughs> I'd like yeah. to think that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to think that didn't happen. But either way, even in our, our not wanting to do something, when we have let go of our pride, let go of our my want, my needs for what God's trying to do for God's plan he always honors that and I think what was really uh, stands out for me anyway is that um, Jesus sees far more yeah. in, 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 an, in an instant than we do so it's like how do you not trust someone who has seen the future and loves you yeah and in this instance that little bit he had god jesus already seen what it can do so that little bit that little bit of effort you give to pray or that little bit of effort you give to read your word that's going to multiply into things that are impossible to a human who doesn't believe in christ yeah. that are impossible to someone who's never heard the gospel um, it will lead to things or people being saved through you, God using you, and uh, a lot, a lot of things, a lot of impossible things yeah. can happen from that little bit. Yeah, I think something else that um, I got out of this that I've actually not written down uh. um, is obviously just thinking about it now. Um, it was from the little boy that the bread and the fish came so there was like 5,000 men so there was a lot of people there that perhaps could have had something to offer but it doesn't say anything about them it's just yeah, picks yeah. up on this one boy yeah. um but how maybe that can sometimes be us like the, yeah. like you said to me earlier yeah. when you look into someone else and um comparing yourself to other people like we compare ourselves to everyone else around us you're like this little boy yeah might have looked at like the 5,000 people around him and thought any one of these people could give it what they have because it doesn't actually we don't know if anyone else had anything they might have had stuff in their bag that they yeah. just didn't offer but um yeah. this one little boy offered it up and gave it and yet jesus used that so like sometimes we can be fearful of giving yeah. the little thing that we have because we think someone else can do it better yeah, yeah. or that there's other people around us that could pray better or yeah, yeah. whatever yeah. the situation might be need something better yeah, we look yeah. to other people to fill that gap when all god or jesus is asking is for us to give the little that we have and he will use us in that yeah yeah so that's just something that it's you amazing. literally told me earlier and now it's like <laughs> oh this is actually what you're talking about yeah, today yeah. so <laughs> and it's very yeah. similar to the story of um, elijah when uh and the widow who gave her little her oil and flower that was left and uh, every day it multiplied every day she had enough every day she had supply and it's like you know you don't see it at first sometimes no. at first obviously here Jesus does the miracle I'm, I'm sure while the boy is there and he sees everything uh, but sometimes your little can result in your in your um, harvest coming a lot later than you even expected sometimes your harvest comes in in times that you didn't realize oh i actually needed that that bit of time that 10 minutes you give to pray could come back to 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 harvest 10 years down the line because yeah. you made a prayer that was so small to you 
but God heard it, but in his time, he answered it. Mm. And um, I think that's an amazing lesson to to everyone. Like, if you whatever you're doing, just give your only, like, and that's what Rich's message that time was. Yeah. Was when you give your only, the only thing you have, and Jesus gave his only, uh, and we just had Passover yesterday, and that's because... God the Father gave his only son for us. Yeah. So be prepared sometimes to give the only bit you have. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's not even for you. No. I think like sometimes we can hold on to the little bit we have through fear. Like, yeah, yeah. We can be fearful to give our only bit to God yeah. because we don't see the plans and the things that he's going to use for yeah. it. And we don't see the end game or the yeah, yeah. final result we just see that us given our little at the moment could be hard it could be difficult for us to yeah, yeah. let go of whatever it is um but jesus will multiply it like we've seen here like these five little loaves and two fish jesus yeah. multiplied it so whatever you give jesus will multiply god will multiply and bless you with that and yeah. he'll Definitely. bless others as well like yeah, it says yeah, it's yeah. this one little boy but that fed at least 5,000 men, yet alone families and everything else amongst that. Yeah, yeah. So just not letting like fear control you from giving what you have to God because God has the plans and the purposes for our lives. He knows what we're going to do, when we're going to do it, and what he's going to do with what we've got, and his yeah. plans are greater than ours. Most definitely. And I think... Um, there's some significance in the barley loaves as um, there's like a symbolism. Uh, obviously, you might not know this if you're you, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the barley is like the first grain to be harvested in the spring, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread um, celebrates the first fruits of the barley harvest. That sounds like a lot, I know, but. <laughs> Jesus uh, performed this miracle as Passover was approaching and this is what we the season that we're in where um, of Passover and whatnot and I think just to take your time to to think of what your only is in this moment is really important to um, take your time and say do I do I value games more than God do I value uh, my friendships over God do I value uh, school over God obviously you're not in school right now but what do you value more than God and are you able to give that up to give him your only and sometimes your only is giving up certain things that take up your time uh, and what not yeah. what do you feel like uh, if you were right now to say, yeah. God, I'm giving you my only, what would that be for you? Um, I don't actually know. Yeah. Like, in what... Like, for me, Yeah. for me, it would probably be sports, my... Okay. Like, <laughs> so, like, giving up... My love up. of sports, okay. like, is, like, giving him time, I think. Yeah. That would be giving what I have, because I don't think I can offer monetary things to to jesus right now yeah but <laughs> what i do have is time and yeah i feel like that i can give yeah i definitely feel like the past like couple of weeks obviously we've had a lot more time to yeah yeah give to god so i feel like i have given god a lot more time but pre isolation like yeah, i wasn't yeah, watching yeah. any tv like yeah, yeah, at all yeah, yeah. um but now I've become a little bit of a Marvel fan. <laughs> so <laughs> She's watching that, Marvel guys. I've got up to Infinity War and I'm quite <laughs> proud of myself. So in like the couple of weeks that I've been off, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've literally <laughs> watched one a day. But yeah. um within that, like say my Marvel time is between three and five. <laughs> like I've actually set aside time. Set aside a Marvel time. Um so that is when I watch Marvel. <laughs> which probably isn't good because then if something else comes up, so the other day I was um, studying at yeah. like two and then I got really into it, then like three o'clock came and I didn't want to, <laughs> it sounds like 
bear with me. Yeah. Okay, so in three o'clock came and I was like, oh, it's Marvel time. Because um, mum goes out and she doesn't like watching it, so I think it's a great time <laughs> to watch it. Um, so three o'clock came and I thought, do you know what, I can actually willingly walk away from my study right now and yeah. go and watch Marvel. So yeah. I left it and I carried on studying and I started watching Marvel at like half four. Yeah. Um, but in my head, like, I had to make that decision to like, yeah. you know, I can't, yeah. like, at the moment I'm in the zone of studying and I'd be... Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't willingly walk away from that and go and watch Marvel knowing yeah. that <laughs> yeah. I was getting into something. So, yeah. if anything, I think like maybe Marvel has taken over a little bit of my life. Yeah. But not to the extent that. <laughs> yeah, like, I get you. I get you. That I'm like prioritizing that over okay. the word of God. Yeah. Does that yeah, makes sense. Yes, I get you. But if I had to like. Yeah. Give my only, it yeah. would be giving that time up because. Like, I would rather be in the Word of God than watching Marvel and yeah. all that. Yeah, well, you heard it here first. Give up a bit of Marvel time. Yeah. For God. And um, you have to, like, honestly be honest with yourselves. Are you, are you, don't do it and then not spend time with God. Yeah. You know, you could, you could end up, like, not watching the film. Yeah. But, just reading the word, but not really trying yeah. to understand it, but just, um, but knowing why you're doing something it will give you purpose, will give you a, a sense of, uh, I'm doing this because I want to get closer to God and I have a real desire for it. Yeah. And when there isn't a desire for it, it's very hard sometimes. So you have to push yourself. Uh, uh, and um, I think the biggest lesson out of this is just, spend some time with God as yeah. always I feel like this is a message we'll always tell yeah uh, on every video is spend time with God read your word pray um, talk to your family or friends even the ones who don't want to hear about it talk to them about God they're gonna get annoyed but it's all right yeah. you know that's who you are if that's who you are it's who you are and people have to accept who you are Otherwise, they're not your friends, are they? Anyway. Not. <laughs> yeah. In a little jiggle. <laughs> yeah, a little jiggle. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Yep. This has been thank uh, you. Roots Online. It has been. It has been a very uh, odd experience for both of us. But, yeah, it is weird. But we hope you got some out of it. Yep. Uh, so leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, and all that. All that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Share it with a friend. Yeah. Send it across. Yeah. <laughs> Get it out there. Yeah. And uh, I want you guys to share on the WhatsApp group anything you think you want more clarity about or uh, just comments, stuff you learn, and then we can reply you okay. when we want to. I'll reply straight away because I'm really good at replying. <laughs> You just don't want the notification thing. Huh? No, the little one annoys yeah. me, so I need <laughs> exactly. to get rid of it. <laughs> but I reply. Yeah, you do. All right. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>